$4,000 is a lot of money, and as someone who enjoys reading and watching bike reviews, it's hard not to notice that bikes two to three times that price get all the attention. I get it, it's exciting to hear about the latest and greatest gear, but as a normal working citizen and an average rider at best, I personally can't justify spending more than $4,000 on a bicycle. Even spending that much kind of makes me sick, but I do think that four grand gets you a very capable, high-end bike that will last you many years to come. Despite what the big publications tell you, $4,000 is anything but a budget option. So let's take a look at five new trail bikes for 2023 that I'd be stoked to ride, and I'm willing to bet 90% of riders would be too. The Marin Rift Zone. This 130mm travel trail bike starts at $1,799 for the Rift Zone 1, with the range topping XR model priced at $3,499, and the Rift Zone 2 right in the middle at $2,399. Amazingly, you can still buy this bike in either a 29-inch model or a dedicated 27.5-inch model, which is becoming very rare. I think in five years we're going to start having the 27.5 ain't dead crowd on forums. Updated for 2023, this bike is now longer, lower, but the identical slackness as the previous generation. Kind of a refreshing change of pace. A 65.5 degree head tube angle, 77 degree seat tube angle, and not a ridiculously long wheelbase at 1,234.4 millimeters for the size large. While the Rift Zone 1 is a great beginner-friendly option, I'm more interested in the Rift Zone 2 and the XR models. Both bikes have a 140 millimeter travel Marzocchi bomber fork, a Z2 on the Rift Zone 2, and a Z1 on the XR, with a RockShox Deluxe Select Outback on the Rift Zone 2, and a Fox Float X Performance on the XR. Both bikes have a 12-speed drivetrain, hydraulic brakes, and dropper post. The XR gets a nicer drivetrain and four-piston TRP brakes as opposed to two-piston Shimano brakes, which is a nice upgrade for those fast downhill sections. I'm not going to bore you with every single spec detail. I've left links to all the bikes I'm talking about today in the description below, so you can check that out for yourself. I would recommend the Rift Zone 2 to an intermediate rider who doesn't like to get too radical on their bike, and is willing to upgrade parts along the way, and then the XR to a more advanced, hard-hitting trail rider, such as myself. The Vitus Mathique. This very popular trail bike has been completely revamped for 2023, and you can now buy it in the US on Vitus's website, rather than having to go through chain reaction cycles or wiggle. The Mathique has Four different models ranging from $1,699 up to $2,599, which are very realistic figures. The cheapest model has 130 millimeters of travel front and rear, while the other three have 140 millimeters of travel front and rear. For these geometry numbers, I'm just going to focus on the 140 millimeter travel version, since that's the majority of them. It has a 65.5 degree head tube angle, same as the Rift Zone with a 77.5 degree seat tube angle. The wheelbase is 1,244 millimeters with 445 millimeter chainstays. All four of these bikes have good parts for the price, and the cheapest VR model even has a dropper post, which is quite astonishing, but I'm most interested in the range topping amp model, especially if the claimed weights are accurate. There's a significant weight difference for $300 between these two models. Spec highlights include a RockShox Pike Select, RockShox Deluxe Select Shock, Shimano SLX Drivetrain, and Schwalbe Magic Mary and Hans Dump tires. Really impressive value here. I do think it's a better looking bike than the previous generation, so I was very excited to see this updated Mythique. The Norco Fluid. What a beautiful looking bike this is, and one I was pretty excited for when they first announced it. This bike offers four models ranging from $1,999 up to $3,999, but I think the $3,149 A2 is the sweet spot. If you can spring for the range topping A1, you do get a nice list of parts, and I personally adore the green and gold paint job, but understandably, $4,000 is a lot of money. And that's how we started the video. See what I did there? I would personally avoid the two bottom specs, 
because you can get similar components on the Vitas for less money. 65 degree head tube angle, 76.7 degree seat tube angle, and a 1,245 millimeter wheelbase. I do like how Norco has different chainstay lengths for each size, so the bike will ride similarly for all sized riders, and they even offer an extra extra large for you extra tall riders. The A2 Norco gets the Marzocchi Bomber Z2 with a Fox Float X performance out back. Shimano SLX drivetrain with the four piston TRP Slate Evo brakes. I'm happy to see manufacturers specking other options than Shimano and SRAM. Competition is good. The commensal T.E.M.P.O. Or as it's better known, the commensal goofy name. I know it's tempo, but what's with the periods? Is this an acronym for something? I couldn't find anything. This bike seemed to shock the entire bike community as it's a short travel trail bike from a very downhill oriented brand. I've always liked commensal bikes, but I never felt like I needed the travel or weight that most of their bikes provide. So I was pretty stoked when they announced this model. This bike starts at $3,200 and goes all the way up to $6,200. But for the purpose of this video, we'll obviously be focusing on the entry level model called the Ride. 140 millimeters up front with 125 millimeters out back using a dual link virtual pivot point design. Big claims of this bike pedaling great, being playful and absolutely ripping it on the downhills, which I don't totally doubt after reading Pink Bikes glowing review of it. Granted, they had the $6,200 version, but the kinematics and the platform are the same, so you'll get a similar riding experience to what they talked about. 65.5 degree head tube angle, 76.6 degree seat tube angle, with a 1,238.5 millimeter wheelbase. It has a RockShox Pike up front and a Deluxe Select Plus out back, four piston TRP Trail Evo brakes, with spank rims, which is a nice rim despite how many times it says spank on it. That's a very clever callback from the last video. Check it out if you want. The only letdowns on this particular bike, in my opinion, are a press fit bottom bracket and it uses SRAM SX Eagle drivetrain. I've personally never used SX, but I've heard nothing but bad things about it. My new bike has GX on it and even it shifts pretty poorly. I can't imagine what two levels down feels like. Maybe SRAM should make their mechanical group sets shift better rather than releasing $2,000 transmissions. That's just one consumer's opinion. Claimed weight on the size small is 32.4 pounds. I really like this bike on paper and I would love to demo one. The Canyon Neuron. The all new Canyon Neuron was announced just a couple weeks ago, but all the reviews so far are of the range topping $5,500 CF9 SL, which has the cables routed through the headset. That is silly. I hope that's a trend that dies off. Luckily, I'm here with some good news, and the aluminum versions use traditional internal cable routing. The aluminum versions are also more affordable at $2,099 and $2,599 for the Neuron 5 and 6, respectively. Other markets outside of the US get more build options, but us Americans get the two alloy versions and one carbon bike so far. For this video, my focus is on the $2,599 Neuron 6. 140 millimeters of travel up front, 130 millimeters out back, and arguably the least aggressive geometry of all the bikes on this list. A 66 degree head tube angle, 76 degree seat tube angle, and a 1,234 millimeter wheelbase. Spec-wise, it uses a Fox 34 Rhythm fork and a DPS Performance rear shock. NX Eagle drivetrain, although the pictures of the bike show a Shimano drivetrain, your guess is as good as mine, SRAM brakes, and DT Swiss wheels. Claimed weight for this bike is at 32 pounds. This bike also isn't available until June, so do keep that in mind if this one really gets you excited. I'm glad to have seen this bike get an update, but it's not a radical departure from the prior generation. A nice, affordable, direct-to-consumer trail bike for the masses. What exciting times we live in! Bike prices have started to normalize and we have five new exciting trail bikes that aren't absurdly priced. My hope is that the bike industry focuses on making bikes more affordable rather than innovating new, useless, expensive tech 
like SRAM transmission. But hey, a guy can dream. I think these are five of the best options available right now. There's plenty of other options, but these are five that I found. They're new, they offer pretty good value for the price, and I'd be stoked to ride any of them. I did buy a new bike recently. Was it one of these five? No, it wasn't, and there's a reason. I was very interested in all five of these bikes, honestly, um, but at the time I was buying, none of these were on sale, and pretty much every other bike in the world was on sale, so it didn't make much sense to pay full price for a new bike when I could get one for a lot cheaper. My new bike was almost $2,000 off its retail price, so it was kind of a no-brainer to go with that. If all things were even, no bikes were on sale, I definitely would have gotten one of these bikes. A disclaimer that didn't need to be made, but I made it anyways. I hope this video was helpful if you're on the market for a new bike. Thank you so much for watching, and until the next one, stay rowdy within reason.